Welcome to Essentials Explained. Today we'll be talking about sensitivity tables, or as Excel calls them, data tables. These will enable you to understand a broad array of different scenarios based on small changes to your input variables. Let's jump right in and discuss. So let's talk about data tables. What are data tables? If you go up to data, what if analysis data table, it lets you see the results of multiple inputs at the same time. Really what you're gonna use this for is any kind of scenario analysis. So anytime you're trying to understand what the implications of changing a number of your inputs are, data tables are really, really good at this. In our example, our client has asked us to understand how the blue pink color would have performed on a margin dollars basis if revenue and margin percent had been different in the LTM period. First thing I will do is insert a pivot table. Alt NVT lets me put in a pivot table. I'll put that on a new sheet. I'll drag in revenue. I will drag in margin dollars and I'll actually drag in this calculated field we built, which is the margin percent which I think is, is another benefit of using calculated fields. You still have your margin, right? You still have that calculated field in here. You can double check that if you don't trust me and say, you know, does that work? Yes, that is true. Next thing you want to check is that it's in the LTM period and that you're only looking at the right paint color. So LTM, I drag that into my filters. I select LTM paint color. I only want blue paint. So I click on blue paint. And now we have a pretty good sense of our revenue and our margin for blue paint. The thing you really want to be careful here for is that you're looking at all subsections of blue paint. Cause I could do this analysis on an aggregate basis, but it really wouldn't be right because within this blue paint category, we know we have subcategories of different pricing. So if I drag pricing bucket onto my rows, we can see there's a real difference here between our basic and our premium pricing category in terms of margin, which, which really isn't surprising as most of your basic offerings will likely be more commoditized. And so more competition will lead to lower prices and a lower margin product where a premium product will have more value additive services and demand a price premium from the market because there's some kind of brand recognition or value added component of it that demands a higher price and ultimately a higher margin. So helpful to understand what product subcategories you have to make sure you're looking at your products at the appropriate level of granularity. Let's talk about the data table. So first thing I'm gonna do is build a basic header. So let's call this blue basic paint. I will drag that across a number of rows. So let's do one, two, three, four, five. Control one gives me this option, center across selection. Let's just do this, you know, kind of basic header, gray, outside border. I'll make this bold. And I think that works. So when you're working with a data table, your top left cell in your table. So if this is our whole table, this is our top left cell this is what you want to return. So this is going to be the value. It's typically some kind of calculation. So if I have the sum of my margin percent multiplied by my revenue, that gives me my margin dollars, right? We can see this is the same as the margin dollars we currently have. What I want to do is I want to put some kind of input on my row. So in different columns, and then I want to put some kind of other input in my column in my different rows. I found best practice is always put your current value in the middle. So if you have five columns, put it in column number three. If you have five rows, put it in row number three. Really simple way so that people can always track what is positive and what is negative. I will put margin in my columns. So if I copy the current margin and I paste it into my middle column, I can come up here and I can actually add a margin change and I'll just put a toggle up here. So let's do two and a half percent probably feels right. I'll make this blue and then a yellow just to make it really obvious what is a toggle and what you can toggle through. And if I take the current value and I subtract the margin change, use F4 to lock that in place, 
copy it. And then if I take the current value and I add this margin change, lock that in place, I can now see I have a really simple value where I have my current margin and then either plus or minus a specific change. I can do the same thing for my column. So if I paste the current revenue into the middle row, so the third row, let's say I want to make another toggle for revenue change and I will make this, you know, maybe let's say 10,000 probably feels directionally right. If I come down here, I say this value minus my 10,000 locked in place, copy that, this value plus my 10,000 locked in place and drag that down. Now I have a revenue column as well. If I were to select this whole data table, th this is where the magic really comes in, is I could come in and I could say data, what if analysis, data table, row input cell, will be my row, so that's my margin, and then my column input cell would be my revenue. And if I hit OK, you can see Excel's just built all these calculations for me. And if I simplify this, just so you can see it, my middle cell, so where my current margin is and my current revenue, this ties with my current margin dollars, which is obviously really important. I can just add maybe an outside border here so you can see that this is a the inside and maybe I'll put like a light gray. I think this probably looks good. And then you know, like a slightly darker gray in here and you can do, you know, a border here, a border here, control shift seven will do that really quickly and make this bold. It's really easy to see that. Oh, wow. You know, I currently have $58,000 in margin dollars. If we had made $10,000 less, we would have only made $53,000. One thing you can do here, you could make, this first cell transparent. So Alt HFC will change your font color. You can make that white if you want to hide that. And so if I wanted to copy this down, I could just copy this and maybe I want to call this blue premium paint. What I need to do is first I need to update what value I'm getting, right? Because this is referencing nothing. So if I take the sum of revenue and multiply it by the sum of margin, I will get, and I'll just make this black so you can see it. I will get the margin dollars, which ties with my pivot table. Great. Next thing I need to do is I need to update these cells, right? Because there's a different margin. If I grab that, I paste it in here. If I grab the revenue and I paste it in here, my table still is not updated. Why? Because I need to refresh it and tell it the new row and column inputs. Alt A W T will put in a data table. Your row input cell is what is in your rows. It is your margin percent. What is in your columns? It is your revenue. I will click on revenue, hit OK, and we can see this ties with our pivot table. Great. What you might be asking yourself is, why are we going through all this hassle to build this, this table, right? This is obviously a pretty, or if I clear this, Alt um, H E C will clear the contents. And if I go equals my margin, lock it in its row, multiply it by my revenue, lock it in its column. And then I can actually just literally recreate this with, you know, paste formulas. And I get the same exact answer that I just had with just doing a simple multiplication. That's fine for this answer. And this will work when you have, you know, really simple calculation like this. But imagine you had a number of different inputs that had to flow through a big model. You often can't do a calculation this simple and you may need to actually use a data table to be able to build out this calculation in a more automated way. So obviously very simple for showing something like this, but this is a very powerful tool that will let you see the sensitivities of any different model. So I'm just going to copy this format to make this white. And so finally, what we want to do is we actually want to look at this in an aggregate view. So instead of basic and premium paint spread out, what we'd rather do is blue paint aggregate will tell us what is the total change to our blue paint pink category if we had some small changes to our margin or our revenue. This obviously isn't working because it's still this formula. So what I'm just going to do is actually take the sum of my premium table, my basic table, and then subtract my total margin dollars in actuality. Just lock that in place, copy, paste formulas, 
And what this will tell me is what is the actual change in my margin dollars based on these different scenarios? Let's update these headers because they're not very clear. So our top margin, this is still linked. So what I can actually just do is make this zero because this is no change. And so this will say is this column is if you lost two and a half points of margin, if you gain two and a half points of margin, that seems to work. For revenue, I would actually use equals sum of our assumed revenue minus our total revenue and I'll lock that in place. So if I copy that and I'll just paste that across my whole table, this is gonna say negative 20,000 and this will say negative 40,000 because on aggregate, that's, that's really what we're doing, right? Like if we take 133 and 101, we have 234, 718. So we're actually down $20,000, even though each one of these tables only decreases it by 10,000. This is, I think, the less confusing way to show it, as I guess you could show it as minus 10,000 per paint category, but that is probably more confusing than just showing it like this. And so what are we looking at? Well, we're really saying, and I'll just actually make this, you know, red. I love these, these red number formats, but if you don't like them, you don't have to use them is if our margin decreased by 5% and our revenue stayed the same, that would mean almost $13,000 less margin dollars just in the blue paint category. Or if our margin was to stay the same, but we were able to sell $40,000 more of blue paint, we would get almost $23,000 of additional margin, assuming the mix between the two categories was the same, which obviously an assumption, but helpful for understanding the sensitivity. And so the great part about building toggles in up here is we can really easily change them. So let's say we wanted to look at a wide range. We could put 5%, maybe we put, maybe put $25,000 here. You can really see a much wider range, right? So if we had, you know, $100,000 less of revenue and lost 10 points of margin, it'd be a pretty significant impact on our margin dollars. Or if we want to see like a really small range, so zero point five percent and then you know five thousand dollars of revenue change you can see it's obviously a lot smaller so very very flexible and very easy to toggle through different inputs to see the impact on your margin dollars or whatever your target output is so one little quick piece of cleanup is i'd actually want to add labels on these so if i insert a row here i can come in here and i can just put margin and if i just clear this cell what, what this will do is this will say, you know, margin percent, just to be really clear. Maybe I want to call this actually change in margin percent, just to, to be super obvious. Control one, I can pull up, maybe I, you know, just want a, a bottom border. I can click here, bottom border, my fill. I don't want to fill. And then my font, I want it maybe italic, right? I think that looks pretty good. If I copy this, this is actually the one instance where I would probably merge cells. I have not found a great way to do this um, without merging them. So if you come up here, alignment, this center cross selection won't work for you. I, I have not found that to be successful. If you know a better way, please let me know. Otherwise, what I would do is I would merge them here. And then what you can actually do is flip your text. So either drag it up 90 degrees and hit OK. And that will work. And maybe if you want to alt enter, we'll put a line break and so you can put change in margin percent. And then if you want this in the middle, you can click middle up there or control one will also give you, you know, vertical. If you want it in the center, you can put center that works. And if you want, instead of that border on the bottom, you actually want a border on the right. So if I go none border, border, right, that will change that to show that border there. Maybe make that italic, maybe make the column width five, just to make that a little bit smaller. And then obviously we can change this to you know, revenue dollars. So really obvious what we're doing, right? Change in revenue dollars, change in margin percent, and then you have your table down here. If, if you wanna make this really clear, you could add a note down here and say note, basic and premium price categories calculated separately, right? Or, or some kind of more specific note that will really let everyone who looks at your file know how you did this calculation. So alt 
HFS will maybe make that a little bit smaller and then control I will make that italic. So I think this looks good, right? You can copy this. You could put this in a PowerPoint slide. You could put this in an email. You could do any number of things with a little table like this that easily communicates if you had a certain drop in margin or a certain drop in price or a certain gain in revenue or a certain gain in margin, these would be the implications for your blue paint category margin dollars. One last thing is we're just going to do a tiny bit of cleanup here. So if I copy or I'll just cut this pivot table, put it on the right hand side because I think that is easier to store it and I'll just actually clear out all these rows. So if I highlight these rows, select them, I can delete them very easily. I want to come over and maybe I'll just steal this header because I like that. I'll go back. I'll paste this into row two. Looks like Lee's Pain Company Financial Trends. Let's just call this scenario analysis, figures in dollars USD. That's right. Maybe I want to put, you know, something to call it. This is my toggles. I can make that bold. And I'll put, you know, just like a nice little border on the bottom there, I think always looks good. So I'll use like one of these on the bottom. And then here's my output. I think that looks fine. The last thing I want to do is probably just make this a page break preview. I want to hide my pivot table. So if I drag that in, I'll delete this last row. Then rename the sheet, alt -H -O -R. Let's call this uh, scenario analysis, blue paint, just so it's clear what we're doing scenario analysis on. And then we'll make this tab, alt H O T H O T. We'll make it this dark color blue and put it with our other outputs. Now it is very clear what we've done. It's really obvious where the toggles are. I can go through these, I can change them, everything updates, and I have a really nicely formatted output. So one last point on data tables I realized I didn't explain appropriately was why did we use values for our starting margin and starting revenue? It's because if I link this, so let's just say I'll link this to basic and maybe I'll link this to the actual revenue your data table is not going to work correctly N not super important why that is but it's basically this formula reference will keep updating and so it doesn't allow the data table to work as it's supposed to work and so you see a duplicate values in here what you need to do is make sure you have values here so right i can just copy i can just paste values i can just copy i can paste value and then best practice is to leave values as is blue i have a shortcut to do that you can also come up here, Alt H F C and select a color blue that also works, but having that called out will make it really obvious to someone else. Why is your, will make it really obvious to someone else how your file is built and they'll know that this is a value. If you want to paste in and below, you can you know, copy this, paste special formats, right? And it'll update these. So important thing to understand, Make sure you have values. Make sure you're not referencing the actual number as your data table won't work correctly. In our next video, we'll be discussing a complex sum ifs with multiple criteria and used in conjunction with an indirect formula. If you're interested in understanding more, please check out the next video in our series. Otherwise, thank you for joining us at Essentials Explained, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.